You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is not and, as um, simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many you know, more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. I can't think of a better way to sort of summarize how I felt about the game than to simply say the offense is coming together. Now, I don't want to get too far into the weed. Just just allow me to be over-embellishing in, in my language for just a minute. All right, allow me to celebrate because obviously we can look at this and say it's a bad defense. They're not going to be able to do this again or they could fall apart next week or whatever the case may be fine. But what I am seeing is what we were hoping to see, which is as the season progresses, there begins to be more cohesion. And that's what we're seeing. Not not everything's perfect, but we went from drops all over the place, unbelievable amounts of penalties, Guys running wrong routes constantly in the same spot. And Jordan Love cannot throw accurately, period, end of story. To now, I mean, I I don't know what else to say other than I'm really beginning to get excited about this core. Because, what you know, before you're looking at it going, I don't know who stays, man. And even the guys that stay, you feel like, I don't know that this is going to be a thing. But now you watch this and you see... Jordan do what he's doing and you see Jaden Reed emerge and you see Wicks continue to take a step and you see Watson suddenly begin to arise you know that that really nice catch he didn't get his feet in bounds but that really nice catch and the touchdown and another catch and run you see Musgrave continue to grow every single week we see Kraft start to take a step we're seeing AJ Dillon get back into his stride and, dare I say, even play a little bit better than we've really seen, kind of becoming the Dylan that we've always been wanting. I'm watching a team just filled with young guys, and I'm really starting to appreciate it. Even guys like Valentine, who I don't know that he has a long-term role here, but his energy is infectious. You watch him get in people's faces, and it's like, man, this is a bunch of, feels like a bunch of 18-year-olds playing football on this team, and there's nowhere to go but up, because this is just day one. And we might have the quarterback, the wide receivers, the tight ends, and most of the offensive line in place. We got pass rushers. We got some pretty decent defensive linemen. We got linebackers. We have corners when they can come back healthy with Stokes, Keyshawn, and Jair. We need a little bit of safety help, but it's like if we can get this together and we can get the defense to play up to its potential and we get the offense to continue to grow and maybe add a couple pieces here and there offensive line, Maybe if we have an opportunity to get that legit A number one wide receiver, take a swing at it. You're starting to see the picture come into into frame. And then I'm sitting there watching it going, yeah, you know, it's going to be a win, but all that's really going to do is knock us down the draft. And then you look at it and you're like, wait a minute, we're four and six. We're officially in the playoff hunt. And again, yes, there's a couple tough games coming up, but that's basically it. Every, every game, I mean, even, even Detroit, they almost lost, should have lost to the Chicago Bears. It's on a short week. To pretend that this is unwinnable is nonsense. Now, is it likely to be won? No, it's not. But just to be clear, the Lions offense is not significantly better than the Chargers offense. Remember that we came into this game with a Chargers offense that's actually quite good. So yeah, I mean, it's the 
well, we'll we'll see where they end up after this week. But coming into this week, the fourth best offense in the NFL, Detroit Lions, but the Chargers were eighth. So, I mean, it's a better football team, but this is not the most dominant elite team in the history of the universe. This is a winnable football game against a known commodity. And it's time for, for the Packers to step up and, and punch back, man. Take this momentum. This is a big win at home. The Detroit Lions got freaking embarrassed by almost losing to the Chicago Bears. Jared Goff, I thought, looked like garbage in that game. We got a bunch of injuries, and it's going to be kind of tough, and we might have to scrape the bottom of the barrel somewhere and get some running backs or whatever, but who's to say, man? And again, even beyond these two games, what, what, what's difficult after these two weeks? What the team needs is consistency, period. Just do it again. Do it again. Keep that accuracy. Keep that playmaking ability. This is a fun football team to watch. It can be frustrating for sure, no doubt. There's a lot of nonsense. Two times in field goal range, and we go backwards two times in a row. One time we go backwards, it's a 52-yard field goal as a result of losing 10, 11 yards, and we miss the field goal. The second time we get knocked out of field goal range. I mean, that, that stuff is stupid. Defense constantly giving up third down. Big play, big play. Got him in third and long. Whoops, guy wide open, 15 yards down the field. So there's little stuff that needs to be cleaned up, tightened up, whatever. But it's so much fun to watch the youngest team in the NFL start to come together, start to figure it out, start to become a team, start to become a formidable NFL opponent. So why don't we go through some of the statistics, just make sure we're all on the same page, because some of this stuff, occasionally you look at it and it's like, that's not what I anticipated at all. But Jordan Love, 27 of 40, 322 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, 35 yards was his longest throw. He took three sacks, 108.5 passer rating when targeted. This is the first time since December of 2021 that a Packers quarterback has thrown for over 300 yards, which blows my mind. But I think pretty unanimous that Jordan Love really had a good day. Really not a lot of of nitpicking to do. Not every pass was perfect, but I don't think you can expect every pass to be necessarily perfect. And um, this was about as as on the money as you could ever expect a quarterback to be. Running the ball, Jordan Love, three carries, zero yards. Not his best day. Christian Watson had one for one yard. Emmanuel Wilson, three carries for 12 yards, which is a four-yard per carry average. I actually thought he looked good running the ball. Really unfortunate to see him go down. I always think he looks good running the ball. You can almost you, you always can see it. There is nobody that runs on this team. I mean, they're all very distinct. But Emmanuel Wilson runs the ball, and you just see it and go, what the heck was that? That was too fast to be Dylan. That was too just, like, smashing to be Aaron Jones. I mean, he is just a little bullet. Speaking of Aaron Jones, he only had four carries for 14 yards, 3.5 average, also went down with an injury. Hopefully, those two guys are going to be okay. A.J. Dillon did have the most carries, 14 carries, 29 yards, just 2.1 yards per attempt. That is one of the things that's a little bit surprising to me. Did think he had a pretty good day. Some of that came with the receiving, which we'll see. But uh, honestly, running the ball 2.1 yards per carry and just six yards was his longest carry. It was some hard-earned yards, and there were definitely some carries there where you were excited to see him kind of bruise his way to it. But uh, let's be honest, the star... And the leading rusher for the day was Jaden Reed, who only had three carries, but went for 46 yards, 15.3 yards per attempt, and a touchdown. 32 yards was his longest run of the day. This is one of the things, that too, that shocked me, because when I looked at the receiving, I thought Jaden Reed was our top guy for sure, and I looked at the stats and thought, that's not that good. And I could not figure out what the heck was wrong with my brain, and then I realized, oh yeah, three carries, 46 yards, and a touchdown rushing. Receiving, Jaden Reed, six targets, four receptions, 46 yards. Um, nothing wrong with that, but certainly not, you know, the most amazing thing in the world. You add to that his rushes, and you've got three, tu- uh, excuse me, seven touches, actually 46 for each. So uh, seven touches, 92 yards, and a touchdown on the day. Romeo Dobbs did have the most catches. He had five receptions for 53 yards and a touchdown. Centavian Wicks, five targets, just three receptions, but 91 yards. It's another one that I just did not think that that was the case, but it was. 91 yards, 18.2 yards per attempt, uh, per touch, per target, 30.3 yards per reception. 35 yards was his longest reception. But the crazy thing about that is 35 yards was his longest, but 30 yards is his average. <laughs> Meaning 
basically 30 yards was every single time he got the ball. That's amazing. Like, I, I feel like I got to go back and watch the game again. It's just like, I, did I miss it? Christian Watson, four targets, two receptions, 21 yards, and a tud. A.J. Dillon, four targets, four receptions, 32 yards. Luke Musgrave um, was tied for the most targeted with Jaden Reed and Romeo Dobbs. Six targets, four receptions, 28 yards. Tucker Craft, two targets, two receptions, 32 yards. Emmanuel Wilson, two targets, one reception, nine yards. Malik Heath, one target, one reception, seven yards. Aaron Jones, two targets, one reception, three yards. Um, I mean, the the maybe the greatest part about this is how much distribution there is. I mean, running and catching. You know, Jaden Reed tore it up on the ground and through the air. We had Christian Watson on the ground and through the air. Different success rates, but Dylan on the ground and in the air. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different people caught passes from Jordan Love. Seven caught more than one pass. Only two were over 50 yards. Nobody had over 100 yards. Two touchdowns to two different guys. I mean, the ball was just getting sprayed all over the place. Defensively, the leading tackler, shockingly, was Jonathan Owens. I All I remember is the one missed tackle, so whatever. Two sacks, one from Rashawn Gary, one from Carl Brooks. Tackles for a loss, Devondre, Rashawn, Keyshawn Nixon, Kingsley, and Igbare, and Carl Brooks. The sacks are probably the tackles for a loss. Um, Force fumble, Kenny Clark. And then we had pass deflections from Kenny, Corey Ballantyne, three from Carrington Valentine. I'm really starting to appreciate that guy. Kick returns, Keyshawn Nixon had two re- kick returns for 60 yards. He had a really good day on that. He did muff one of the punts, but. I thought he had a great day, at least on kick returns. Kicking was a little bit of a different situation. Uh, One for two for field goals, two for three on extra points for Mr. Honors Carlson. But uh, I'll tell you what, why don't we take a break here? We'll come back, look at a couple of the team stats, uh, a few other different things, and then we'll get up out of here. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is not as uh, simple as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened up so many more doors. The show is called The The Deal. Deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. It's only a kick, a jump, a block, it's only a serve, it's only a tackle, a run, it's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. So team statistics, and a lot of this can kind of point to why a team wins or loses. Time of possession, Packers won that, basically 32-28. Packers ran more plays. They got more yards, 397 yards. 
Packers did have more penalties, but less penalty yards. Seven penalties for 46 yards. The Chargers, four penalties, 54 yards. Turnovers, the Packers won the turnover battle, 1-0. to zero. Completion percentage, Jordan Love was significantly better, 67.5% compared to 58.3%. Jordan Love had more passing yards, 295 to 244, more yards per attempt. Uh, Jordan Love was sacked more 7% of the time, three sacks, compared to 5.3% of the time, two sacks. But passer rating was in Jordan Love's favor, 105.7 compared to 97.5. Running the ball was definitely in the Chargers' favor, 24 carries, 150 yards, 6.2 yards per attempt. Packers, 28 attempts, 102 yards, 3.6 yards per attempt, but a rushing touchdown. Packers had uh, more first downs, 23 to 17. Third downs are the exact same. Both teams, 7 of 14, 50%. Fourth down, uh, neither team converted a single fourth down. Chargers are 0 for 2, Packers 0 for 1. Red zone, Chargers are 1 for 4, Packers are 1 for 2. So 50% compared to 25%, Packers win that one. Pass deflections, both teams had 5. And that's about it as far as what matters. So pretty much across the board, the Packers were more efficient, more yards, more first downs, etc. You do all that, get time of possession and takeaways, that's pretty tough. It's tough to win that game. It's actually shocking that the Chargers probably should have won the game <laughs> based on all that information. Quick recap from the uh, from PFF. It says the Green Bay Packers' young offense made plays for four quarters and stuck it out for a big win at the end, with Jordan Love looking much improved two weeks in a row now and topping 300 passing yards for the first time in his career. Offensive spotlight for the Packers. It says Packers second year wideouts Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson both found the end zone with quarterback Jordan Love throwing for 322 yards, two scores and zero interceptions. Love took three sacks and fumbled twice, but the Packers are fortunate to recover all three fumbles. The offense coughed up throughout the game. Defensive spotlight. Packers edge rusher, uh, edge defender Rashawn Gary notched a sack and a tackle for a loss and interior defender Kenny Clark had perhaps the best game of a season. The best game of a season that hasn't quite been up to his standard, I guess is the sentence. Registering eight quarterback pressures on first review and sealing the victory with a pass deflection on fourth down with 23 seconds remaining. That's pretty fantastic. And then for the rookie spotlight, Packers rookie wide receiver Jaden Reed was getting touches in every conceivable way, scoring in the first half on a 32-yard end-around run and also hauling in four receptions for 46 yards. Fellow rookie wideout Dontavian Wicks had the best game of his young career, with three receptions for 95 yards. On the other side of the ball, rookie interior defender Carl Brooks had a sack and a tackle for a loss. And and honestly, and I talked about this last night, it's really impressive when you look at how many first and second year guys are flashing, right? I mean, you you can be as much of a goot hater as you want. You can't be disappointed with what we're seeing here, unless you're just choosing to be miserable. This team is, is, is being steered by a bunch of guys that were not here two years ago. I mean, how many guys are starting that started two years ago? Not Jordan. Let's see, not the quarterback, not the left tackle, not the right tackle, not wide receiver one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, not Musgrave, not Kraft, not Sims, not Lucas Van Ness or Carl Brooks or Devontae Wyatt, not Wooden, not Quay. Was Keyshawn here two years ago? I don't think so. Not Keyshawn. Neither of our safeties right now. None of, I mean, honestly, neither of our corner, not Valentine, not Ballantyne. I mean, we got three interior linemen, Josiah DeGuara, Kenny Clark, Preston, and Rashawn, and that's basically it, and Devondre. That's insane. That's the entire group that was here just two years ago. And even a lot of those guys are young. Elton Jenkins is young. John Runyon and Josh Myers are young. All three of the interior guys are young. Rashawn just got paid. Jair just got paid. Stokes is still on his rookie deal. Savage is technically still on his rookie deal. And this group of just first and second year guys, this entire team built of guys that are brand new to the league, just went out and beat the Chargers. And I'm very excited for tomorrow when we have the opportunity to look at, once again, how our rookies are stacking up compared to some of the other guys. How is Wyatt, you know, who's, you know, I know a second year guy, but look at Quay, look at Wyatt, look at Brooks, look at Wooden, look at Look at Jaden Reed. Look at Luke Musgrave. Where, where do they stack up? There's 32 teams, right? You would expect there are several wide receivers in front of Jaden Reed because he was a little bit later in the second round, right? He wasn't a first round guy. Wicks should be way at the bottom. Be real interesting to take a look at how 
Jaden Reed is stacking up to the rest of the rookie wide receivers this year. But anyways, with that, the um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was rooting for the Bears to win that game. But um, with that conclusion, and, and the Vikings game just finished for me, the Vikings lose and fall to 6-5. and five. The Bears fall to 3-8. and eight. Again, there's, there's, there's a tough road ahead of us, but if the Packers can find a way to win this game on Thursday, they go to 5-6 and six and are one game behind the Vikings. But again, let's revisit this even if they end up losing. They're 4-6. and six. Let's say they lose their next two. 4-7, four 4-8. And four and Beat the Giants, Giants 5-8. Beat the Buccaneers, 6-8. Beat the Panthers, 7-8. And and then you just got the Vikings and the Bears. And I know it seems ridiculous because it's like, well, then they have to, I mean, they basically have to win out in order to get in, but not really. If you look at the playoff picture, there are seven teams if the, the, the season ended right now. Eagles, Lions, 49ers, Saints, Cowboys, Seahawks, Vikings. The next team right on the bubble is the Packers. So all the teams that are knocking on the door right now are four and six or worse. Packers, Rams, Falcons, and Bucks are four and six. Are these teams that are going to go on and, and run the rest of the table? No, they're absolutely not. The NFC is bad. There's going to be an eight or worse win team getting into the playoffs this year. That's almost like a certainty at this point. I mean, really, are the Rams, Falcons, or Buccaneers going to go on some massive run and win out with the exception of three games, two games? I really, really doubt it. They all have losing records. How do they go the rest of the season with only two losses? So we'll see. One week at a time. You never know. We're, 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 as close to the number one pick, basically, as we are to any playoff success. But, you know, the bottom line is they, they are, as, as much as this looks like just a bad football team that isn't going to go anywhere, they're right there. They're, they're number eight. Out of seven playoff teams, they're number eight. So, as I'm sure all of us heard in our lives, you know what or get off the pot, right? Not, now is the time. You want to mess around and win some football games and, and, figure it out and start hitting your stride, awesome. Let's do it. Let's do exactly that. And as a final thought before our final break here, stuff changes fast, man. You know, things kind of go in a certain direction and we go all in on it and then things change. So we look at it and say, the Packers are not a good football team. This is, this is a fluke, whatever the case may be. Look at the Broncos. They come in, they're complete trash. They suck. Sean Payton's a joke. Russ is washed, et cetera, et cetera. Now they're on a four-game win streak. What's the new narrative? Things change. Vikings were trash. They start tearing everything up prior to this loss. They just keep winning and winning and winning. They lose everybody. They keep winning. You never know, man. Things change on a dime all the time. Why not us? Why not the Packers? Defense hit its stride around this time last year. Offense starts to pick it up. Just sneak out one of these wins. Lions, Chiefs, beat one of them. I don't care how you got to do it. The Lions stole one from the Chiefs because they played like garbage. Do that. Cheat. (laughs) Travis Kelsey forgets how to catch footballs, just starts volleyballing those things up in the air for picks. He's just dropping down, setting them, having flashbacks to his high school days or something. I don't know. High school gym class. Either way, it was a good day. Let's take our final break. We'll come back and let's rip through a couple more calls. I want to make sure we're as caught up as we possibly can be with these calls this week. We got a bunch to get to. If you're not caught up, go back to the last one from last night. Get all caught up on the calls. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, Everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. What's going on, Ryan? Chris from Alabama. What's up? Uh, Well, the game just got over, and that game was a very, very good game. Definitely from the offense. Definitely from Jordan Love, 27 for 40, 322 yards, two touchdowns, no turnovers. Kind of sloppy in the first half with a, you know, with the uh, bad snap. Uh, the drops was an issue, but 
Overall, man, I'm, I'm satisfied. That, that was a that was a great performance. The balls look way more on target. Okay, Plum that he missed, but like I said, it seemed like it getting fewer and fewer every game on on the targeted passes. Uh, I mean, I ain't got no complaint. Defense, yeah, the defense is the defense. Giving up yards, giving up big plays, but at the end they came they came through in the end. So. I'm satisfied with it. That was a great win. That is the the best I done seen this team play all year. And I mean, going into Thursday, who knows, man? We might can pull something out. I'm still kind of I'm still kind of on the fence of do I want to win or do I want to get draft <laughs> position? But I mean, the day hey, how, how they played, they came out with that victory, man. That was, that was just a great game. But yeah, man. Jordan Love looked a whole lot better. And, I mean, if he can put some, put some games like that together and, and continue to get on the uptick, who knows? We'll see. We'll go, Pat, go. And I'll talk to you later. I think the only real negative here is, you know, it, it's been real low stress for me watching these Packer games because it's, it's not – it's not the end of the world. It's like you said, I, I don't, it's, it's not going to crush me if we lose because it just pushes us closer to another positive thing and it moves us further away from something that was never really going to happen anyways. I mean, there's no expectation of playoffs or anything. So it just, you know, it's whatever. But start getting your hopes up, start getting excited, and um, that Lions game goes south. It's, it's just going to hurt again. But I guess that's part of what being a fan is about, you know, pain. <laughs> Not a real fan of a team if there's no pain. Ryan, Kyle from Madison, man, what's up? Yeah. All I can do is laugh. I've been just evil laughing for like five minutes. Packers just won the game. I'll tell you what, man, you can definitely see why these two teams are both, or up to this point, we're both one and four in these close games because they both make a lot of mistakes. Um, but I don't care. I don't care. We just need to win. And especially on a day, I was really worried the defense was going to set up uh, another just horrific, you know, no time left, need a touchdown drive. But, you know, the, the offense freaking went right down the field. I thought, I hoped it wasn't too early, but the defense did finally close it out. Although I'm sure people talk about it like, yeah, if what's his name, you know, doesn't drop that, it's at least the tie game. I don't care. I don't care if Wicks doesn't drop the freaking ball directly into his hands to play before. It's, uh, you know, it's, I don't care. You know what I mean? With all the bad balls that have gone against us, all the bad calls and balls and bounces, I don't, I don't care at all. I don't feel bad at all. I don't feel it diminishes our victory at all. I am very excited. Um, I'm very excited for the offense. I mean, they can play better, but we saw some signs of life from unexpected places like Tucker Craft. Um, it's, you know, it, I mean, it makes you sick that probably Jones, I mean, I don't want to speculate too much, but I mean, we all saw that. That looks like probably somebody you're not going to see playing again at his age. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, so that was disgusting. Um, however, you gotta be proud of this team, right? I mean, I thought love looked great. Um, I mean, uh, that, I, I don't know, you know, what more on the offense you want. A couple more catches. Maybe one, two balls and, you know, foot in a different place. But otherwise, I love looked pretty crisp with the accuracy. <sighs> Some bad drops by the receivers, but, uh, you know, overall, I'm real happy. The defense, on the other hand, is a dumpster fire hellscape. Um, and a lot of that's probably with lack of personnel. Now, they did close the game out. But, I mean, if, if this is supposed to be the offense that our bend but don't break scheme is going to be the most successful against, right? Uh, I'm sorry, but if, you're going to come in and let them have three plays and 82 yards like they did a few drives from the end. I mean, if that's your bend, but don't break, man. Take two weeks off and quit, to, to quote number four, right? Like Joe Barry. But whatever, there'll be time for that. I'm I'm just excited. I'm excited. It kind of keeps the faint dream alive, and we see growth from number 10. And that's really a number one objective here. So, I mean, 300 yards, I'm, I'm pumped, man. Take it easy. Oh, sorry. I'm over here yawning, trying to time my yawns so that I can come back in time. 
you know, I, I think if we had lost the game, I would have felt just as good. It wouldn't have really diminished much. I mean, we wouldn't be really talking playoffs. We'd be talking draft. But it wouldn't have really changed anything because the information is still the information, right? If, if, if uh, what's-his-name catches that pass and runs it in for a touchdown instead of dropping it and we lose the game, what changed? Nothing. I mean, every single thing that happens still happens. So, you know, even going into this Lions game, you look at it and you, you say, you know, coming out of that game, you feel good about it. I just want to feel good about it coming out of the Lions game again. If if they can operate, you know, if we lose the game, you know, because of the defense or because of a couple little things here and there, a um, couple little mistakes, you know, we just made a couple more mistakes than they did. They played a cleaner game, less missed tackles, less penalties, you know, less botch snaps, fumbles and that kind of stuff. But still, the the passes are on target. The wide receivers are getting open. Guys are making plays. I think the biggest thing for me right now is that was so much fun to watch, that offense. And you saw the spark, and you saw the potential for this to be a talented offense, a good offense. Just don't take it from me. Do it again. Do it again, do it again, do it again. It's going to be tougher. It's a much tougher defense next week, but do it again. Win, lose, who cares? Just do it again. Hey, Kyle from Madison again. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry to like bring us down on a victory day, but I do have to vent about something that bothered me this whole game that's not football related. And I wonder if it bothered anybody else, but I found it extremely disgusting that Fox decided to use Dwight Eisenhower's D-Day speech to promo their freaking Michigan football game a week after Veterans Day. Like, Dude, you know, 160,000 people died in the Battle of Normandy. And now we're going to compare that to freaking football? Like, what kind of moronic executive has lost their damn mind about that choice? It just made me furious every commercial. I just can't believe anybody, anybody with a brain thought that was a good idea. It just, just got me hot, man. Just disgusting. All right, thanks. Didn't notice, but uh, fair point. It, uh, it's Jersey Mike. Uh, I just I just wanted to go back to my feelings from the game. Um, I initially anticipated a loss. I still believe that we lose had the Chargers not come up with a few key drops. Um, uh, and realistically, I'm not happy with the team overall, but I am very happy with the offense, the rookies on offense. Um, they're, they're the guys who are stepping up. Uh, Jordan Love, uh, he has been getting better game after game. Um, I'm willing to concede that some of his picks aren't the best, but also they're, they're not the worst. And in my opinion, they're growing pains. Uh, we, we didn't want Aaron Rodgers anymore. So if we've got a guy out there who's not afraid to press the issue, you know, uh, some of those guys, Brett Favre, like to throw interceptions. And if that happens, that happens so long as we play good football and we're in games uh, with, with the better teams. Uh, this passing uh, defense wasn't very great uh, coming in, obviously, but we still were able to turn it on. Uh, I forget how many games it had been since we had a 300-yard passer, but that's nice to see Jordan Love break that. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what your opinion is on Jordan Love, and if he continues to play like this, you know, what, what are we feeling? Anyway. Go back up. I think that's a pretty good way to summarize it. I mean, it, it feels weird because it's like the offense played well and the defense, at least point wise, didn't really do anything wrong. But yet I'm not happy with the team. That doesn't seem to make sense, but it does because the Chargers are a bad football team and they should have won the game. I mean, <laughs> so the team is not where it needs to be. That's for sure. So I, I don't know exactly how to reconcile that aside from, again, the, de- the team as a whole kept making mistakes in critical situations. You know, third downs and whatnot, defense especially, but the offense also with just some really ill-timed mistakes, sacks and penalties, etc. Um, huh, there's another one. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think um, there's every reason to be excited about the offense. As I said, you know, two weeks ago, Jordan Love, I thought, had his first good game. One week ago, 
I thought Jordan Love had another good game. Uh, or actually, no, it was, it was three weeks ago I said he had his first good game. Two weeks ago, I said um, he was, it was, it was his best game. Last, so I, I was wrong. I thought it was just the last three games, but it was four. I'm pretty sure because he had the one that was like high 60s, which I thought was like a, a first pretty good game, but it wasn't quite in the 70s. Then he was... 70s and then he was 70s again and then there's this game so I think it's actually four games where he's actually played fairly well and this should be his third game where he grades 70s or higher I'd be stunned if he wasn't uh just talking PFF grades specifically but um yeah I mean I I obviously you didn't know I already addressed it but I've as I said um you know when when things weren't going well bottom line if this continues he's not the guy as of right now, the way he's playing, if this continues, he's the guy. I mean, period. Now, that's not to say I wouldn't like to still see some improvement. Of course, you always want everybody to be better. Um, but this is not a guy that you replace. Not not at this level. <laughs> so um, I'm happy with it. Um, some of the throws you'd like to have back, but I, you know, I think there were two, maybe three throws, which I think is not bad for an NFL quarterback, especially as much as he slings it down the field. Two or three misses with two touchdowns and no interceptions, I think is is a stat line that you would take any day of the week, especially when you tack in, what, 65% completion percentage and over 300 yards passing. Um, I mean, there's, there's just nothing to complain about. So he's been getting better every week. And... Um, you know, I, I I I always assume there's going to be some regression all the time. I thought that with Aaron Jones back when he first started, he can't replicate that. I think that with a lot of guys, and and sometimes they surprise. So we'll see. You know, he finally had a good game, and it's like, well, everybody has a good game once in a while. He has a better game, and then he has a better game, and then he has a better game. Um, it was like Devontae. You know, he had a good year, kind of thought he'd regress. He didn't. He got better. And then he got better. And then, and after like four years of that, I thought, okay, he has to have peaked. And then he got like, you know, one point better for PFF. It's like, okay, well, now he peaked. And he kept just edging it out every single year, just getting slightly better every single year. So I don't know how long Jordan can keep pushing this thing. But, you know, bottom line is even if, he, if, if a bad day slips in there, hopefully not catastrophic, but, you know, not the best in the world. Aaron Rodgers had days in the 60s and, and whatnot, in the 50s. It happens. But, um, you know, that's 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 the point, though. Are we talking about a NFL starting caliber quarterback? Are we talking about a guy that isn't great but occasionally has good games? Or are we talking about a guy that is great but occasionally has bad game? Because when, when he had his first good game, it was, <laughs> it was a bad quarterback who had a good game. Now he hasn't had a bad game in like four weeks. I mean, again, you know, ending with the two picks is bad. And, and, you know, two weeks ago, it was just the second half. None of those are really great. But, you know, all told, it's been pretty solid, man. And, you know, not just him. I mean, Jaden Reed has really come along and, and Wicks and, and, uh, and Musgrave. These last two, three weeks um, have been great. So, again, I, I, I really, I don't honestly care that much about winning. I care about please continue this. The the most, I mean, I, w- I would rather lose but the offense keeps striding like this so that we end that game with a loss we could lose by 20 points I don't give a crap I don't know how you lose by 20 points and feel good about it but we could lose that game but if I come out say dude Jordan is the guy and you know Reed is a freaking animal and must you know Christian broke out and all like give me that any day of the week as opposed to we won but we suck and we didn't deserve it screw that I don't want that I want to feel good about this team. I want to feel excited about this team. The wins are secondary. I know winning is all that matters. And, and if, if we were fighting for a Super Bowl or trying to get into the playoffs and we were kind of teetering or whatever, okay, fine, you can talk about that. But at the end of the day, being good is what matters because good teams win Super Bowl. Lucky teams don't. Lucky teams get into the playoffs and get the crap beat out of them. Hey, Ryan, this is Aaron just calling after the game. Uh, that was a pretty good game to watch, huh? Um, but I made the mistake of going on to social media at like mid throughout the game and I was kind of indifferent to the game. I was just like, I'm just enjoying this. That's all you can do, really. 
Um, and on every single Packers post, there was one person that was going like, fire everyone, <laughs> cut Jordan Love, fire Barry, fire the entire staff, fire the training staff, right? And then go on after the game. Sure enough, every single Packers post, he had deleted his comments, and then it was like, this team is amazing. What an incredible win. It's like, no, you do it, dude. Just, just don't. I'm sorry. But anyways, I'm going to... I'm, I, I'm writing a song. By the way, that that is in part why I don't go on social media during um, during the game. It's also because I am that guy. Like I'm I'm, I'm the guy that's like in my house screaming, "You freaking here we go again! Here we go with this crap! Freaking defense! Freaking Jordan! Freaking idiot! This, that, and the other! Freaking whatever!" And I'd, I'd be on social media like, "Here we go again with this stupid idiot!" Go on there screaming, Christian Watson dropped another pass, should be cut. And the next play is like a 60 yard touchdown. It's like, shoot. You don't want to delete it because then, you know, everybody saw it. So you just kind of own it. Or, I, uh, how about we just chill and just don't say anything, just watch the game and then take a few minutes to absorb it and then go. It, it is funny, though, going out and seeing that wasteland. You go out there and you just see all the anger and the rage and you're just kind of like, <laughs> you stupid idiot. Granted, you and I had the exact same thought in that moment, but you said it, and now it's stuck here in eternity. And I didn't, so I get to be superior and walk in and be like, you plebe, you didn't have faith. <laughs> I always have faith. As we speak, and I just wanted to share you the beginning, it's about the Packers and kind of what sums up this season so far. So here's another ukulele song. Oh boy. Why do you do what you do when it hurts? Just stop getting hurt, please. Shoulders and hamstrings. Shoulders and hamstrings. Shoulders and hamstrings. Shoulders and hamstrings. Thank you, Jesus, for Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed. Hey, Romeo Don. So that's my song. Dude, that is the funniest freaking thing ever. <sighs> there's, there's a little bit of a Adam Sandler vibe to it, but just <laughs> shoulders and hamstrings, shoulders and hamstrings. Please stop getting hurt. Thank you, God, for Jaden Reed. Shoulders and hamstrings. <laughs> oh, you are a gem. You know that? Well, do you enjoyed it? I did. Very much. But seriously, these shoulders and hamstrings need to stop causing problems for us because I hope Aaron Jones and, I mean, his was a knee, but I hope oh. Aaron Jones and Emmanuel Wilson are okay. That. that was hard to watch. Um, but anyways, peace out. Good victory. Have a good night. Packers fans. I hope everyone like clips that or something and makes it your ringtone. I need to make that my ringtone. Shoulders and hamstrings. You know what we need to do? Seriously. We need to get that recorded and we got to get a music video out. We got to start putting together, like we got to put together a Christmas album, dude. It's the holiday season. We got to start putting down some albums, bro. We should start a label. What's a labely sounding thing? I guess the robot. So some of these are stupid. Packers playlist records, Lambo lyrics, field goal records, touchdown tunes, Packernet beats. It's simple, but it works. Sounds good. Green Bay grooves. That could be like the name of the album. Green and gold records. Yeah, you get the idea. But uh, that needs to be a thing. Shoulders and hamstring. All right, I'm getting out of here. I got to go to bed. It's very late. You guys have a good night. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye. Shoulders and hamstrings. Why do you do what you do when it gets hurt? Just stop getting hurt, please. Shoulders and hamstrings. Shoulders and hamstrings. Shoulders and hamstrings. Shoulders and hamstrings. Jaden 
Bye.